Hey everyone, I'm Noah. Welcome to my channel. So glad you're here. So I'm going to share with you, this is really exciting for me, I'm going to be uh, doing kind of an unboxing today and uh, I've sent off uh, a lot of uh, comic books from my youth, from my childhood uh, that I had been saving, collecting when I when I was a kid, and uh, you know I've been uh, I haven't been reading or collecting comics you know for many many years, and I've been kind of had these in boxes in storage, and I've been pretty much toting them around with me for the last several decades, and I've been meaning to send them off and get them you know pressed and and graded. And so, over the last over the last year, I've selected several at a time and sent them off. And uh, and so now, this will be the first of probably about five or six videos, I think, that uh, I will be opening up these boxes. So I think I have 16 or 17 boxes to go through. I haven't touched a single one. So um, this is going to be pretty amazing. Um, so let's get to it. And in fact, what I'd like to do, what I'd like to do, what I'd like to do is this, because Dungeons and Dragons has always been such an inspiration for me and uh and comic books have kind of been part of that and what i'd like to point out is that comics were even inspirational for gary gygax and and, and he tells us that so in the uh dungeon master's guide in appendix n um so and whether it's the original version or the revised uh version of the dmg so on on page uh 224, and I'm going to read this. Um, Gary writes, Inspiration for all of the fantasy work I have done stems directly from the love my father showed me when I was a tad, for he spent many hours telling me stories he made up as he went along, tales of crooked old men who could grant wishes of magic rings and enchanted swords, or wicked sorcerers and dauntless swordsmen. Then, too, countless hundreds of comic books went down. And the long-gone EC ones certainly had their effect. Science fiction, fantasy, and horror movies were a big influence. In fact, all of us tend to get ample helpings of fantasy when we are very young, from fairy tales such as those written by the, Brim brother, by the Brothers Grimm or, and Andrew Lang. So anyway, he goes on to say... All of these things were, that were inspirational and educational reading. And he lists probably about 25 or 30 different authors of his favorites. Um, so anyway, uh, that, was something, that was something that I always thought was uh, very, that was very influential to me. And uh, I always kind of took note that, that Gary Gygax made a point of listing comic books as something that was uh, influential to him as well. So, with that, we're going to open up a box, and we're going to start with one of the, I'll say Holy Grail boxes. So, this here, um, I think I know which one this is. Um, because it's one of the small boxes, and so this is one of the signature series, meaning that I sent it in because I was able to get one of the authors or artists to, to sign it. And so I'm pretty sure that's what this will be. Now, if you've ever gone on YouTube and watched some of these uh, channels where... They are strictly comics. I'm not a comic book channel <laughs> by far. Um, what they do is they they open up these boxes and they were like, oh my gosh, you know, I didn't know what I was getting or anything like that. So it's really, in my mind, kind of funny because when CGC sends you um, a box, 
like you know when it gets graded okay first of all because every time that you wait months and months for this to happen you get a pretty big hit on whatever your credit card is so like my wife tells me that guess what cgc just like dinged our american express so so i know that something's coming in the mail and then of course the other thing is is that there's a tracking number like so i don't want these things showing up and sitting on my doorstop or anything like that um on my front porch so i'm i'm always you know when it's coming and then of course they tell you which books they are and when you if you happen to look at that like the grades are right there so it's never a surprise now granted all these boxes have been sitting in my basement for six months or more now and um i don't remember which one came in which box so so it is a surprise all right so here we are opening up this box right here tell you that this is an X-Men. Oh wow, this is so. So, here we are. X-Men, giant size number one. And this one, let me get a little bit closer here. Oh, I got too much light there. Ah, okay. So this one, and as you can see right on the, on the cover there, this one is signed by uh, Chris Claremont, and it was graded as a 5.0. This was one of my one of my comics that I, I bought when I was uh, probably 14 years old. So, um, and it, I bought it as a back issue. All right, and then the other one that is in this as well was the follow-on to that storyline. That was the the new X-Men that came out and so here's the the continuing story of the new team x-men number 94 and that one's graded as a 7.0 and you can probably see right here on the side like there's a couple of spine ticks and everything like it's a it's a dark cover so like those don't come out so i was you know 13 14 years old when i bought those they i mean they they weren't mint condition then and, and they aren't mint condition now, but they're very, those are key issues. So awesome. Those, those are valuable in any condition. All right, moving on. So here's a, a big box. Let's open this one up and see what's inside. This is so exciting. order. I don't know how these things are in here. Uh, all right, they're not in any order. So I'm going to just I'm going to just start on one end and, and work my way to the other end. So So this here, we've got X-Men number 122 and that's graded as 9.6. Fantastic. Very nice, look here. X-Men number 108 at a 9.8. That is just amazing. So I'll, t I'll tell you, these were, I think these were all part of my, um, I think these might be part of the Mile High 2 um, order that I did back when I was like 14 years old. So here's another one. Next is uh, this X-Men 9.4 for issue number 103. Like these were all just in such pristine shape. Alright. Next we have here this is X-Men 
number 97 with a 9.6 and this is giant size number 2 9.4 This one's really awesome here. There's another 9.8 with X-Men. Number 128. Man, that's fantastic. I'm so happy with that. X-Men number 126, 9.6. And this is X-Men number 123 with a 9.4. So I think that all of those were part of the uh, Mile High 2 warehouse find. So. Yeah, in fact... In fact, they even sent back to me the certificates of authenticity that came with each one. And so it says, this is to certify that this is an official comic book from the second Mile High collection. This book has been selected by the professionals at Mile High Comics as being one of the highest quality examples of this particular issue they've ever seen. It is packaged in a Mylar protective sleeve to guarantee its continued unique quality. So that's awesome. I'm so glad that they sent those back. So um, so I can actually keep that with them. So from what I understand, um, Mile High 2 is not considered a pedigree because it was a warehouse find. So... All right. All right, hang on, we're gonna do one more. Because I'm not making 16 or 17 videos. Like, that would take me forever. Besides, this is like feeling like Christmas morning or something, right? So, we're just gonna keep opening presents. What does this one look like? There's a lot of stuff in here. All right, so I have to go through these kind of quickly and everything. I mean, this is a big box. There's like 20 or 25 in here. So I'm not gonna spend a whole lot of time. I'll just hold them up and show them to you and everything so um, now remember um, my comic collecting time frame was probably it was mid 80s so I was like 13 to 16 years old so we're talking 84 to, to 87 time frame so, um, and I read all of these comics. Now, I tried to keep them in great shape, but again, like, my little grubby hands went through all these. So, like, don't ding me for not every one of them being a 9.8. So, um, occasionally I'd buy an extra copy, and so that one would not be read. So, here we are, John Byrne, Man of Steel. Okay, number one, 9.6. Boris the Bear. So this was kind of in, in response to the uh, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. This was kind of an alternative thing. 7.5. I don't know why that one came out so low. 
I think just because it aged. I'll have to read what the graders' notes on that are. This is pretty awesome here. Electra. Frank Miller story. Bill Sinkowitz art cover. So, 9.6. That's a pretty awesome comic there. X Factor, number one. 8.5. Moving along. Classic X-Men. Number one. 8.5. Gosh, I wish I could hold these up. Hold these up so the light doesn't shine so awkwardly on them. Let me try over here a little bit. No, no. There we are. Okay. So this is X-Men 300. 9.2. Watchmen, number one, 9.0. DC Legends, number one, 9.8. Uh, this is uh, John Byrne, Terry Austin, Superman, and uh, reboot. First issue, 9.6. Here's another Man of Steel. Number one, 9.6. So Spider-Man and Wolverine. Number one, 8.5. I can see a spine tick on there. That's what probably... Knock that down. <clears throat> Peter Parker. This is number 64. So, 8.5. So that's Cloak and Dagger. Peter Parker. Everybody probably familiar with, with that. The black costume that came out in Secret Wars. So, uh, Spider-Man, number 252, with an 8.5 grade. Oh, and here we are. Secret Wars. So, I'm trying to turn these lights a little bit off. All right. 7.5 on that. I don't know why these graders are so mean. They must have had a bad night. All right. And <laughs> we were just talking about that. Number eight, Secret Wars, right? Black costume. And that is a 9.0. 9 oh, I used to always enjoy this one. Marvel Team-Up. Spider-Man, Marvel Team-Up. There we go. So that's number 150. That was the final final issue. So that's a 7.5 with the X-Men. All right, about 10 more of these. Uh, Web of Spider-Man, first issue there. So, oops, 9.2. And then here's another Wolverine versus Spider-Man. 9.6. Hang in there, folks. We're almost done. Um, oh, yeah. And Todd McFar McFarlane cover here. Or issue, rather. Sorry. Uh, Amazing Spider-Man number 299. So, 9.4. Loved all the, the little webs that McFarlane made so iconic for, for Spider-Man. So I guess I didn't get number 300. Man. Like, that, like that's the issue, the key issue everybody's after, right? So here's 302. 
as a 9.0. And then here's another McFarlane, the 3.303, rated and scored as a, a 9.4. Yeah, I don't know what, what was going on. I somehow missed issue 300. So, Captain America, number 323, 9.4. Here we are, Astonishing X-Men, number one, 9.4. Almost done here. Captain America annual. You know, this is the time when Marvel would, you know, put Wolverine on their cover. Cover of any book. And it would sell, right? I mean, that's still pretty much the same today. Nine Annual number eight. 9.0. Oh, man. Daredevil. Number 227. So, probably one of the best storylines. 9.4. Love that. Alright. So, how many did we go through? 25 in that box. I think I had 8 or... 8 or 10 from um, the Mile High set. And then 2 from the uh, Signature set. So... I don't know. That was probably like 35 comics, maybe 37. Okay. Hey, everyone. Thanks for uh, for going through that trip with me down memory lane. That was really fun. Um, like I said, I've got, I think, 15 more boxes, and I'm probably going to do at least two or three at a time. So come back and watch another video with me, and um, and we'll we'll do it again. All right, thanks so much. Hope to see you soon.